guys, I am here today with a stack of 10 books, which I think I'm going to be giving 5 stars. So, um, if you haven't seen one of these before, I'm, I'm sure you have, because it's a pretty common video. Uh, 5 star predictions are essentially where someone sits down and talks you through a bunch of books on their TBR that they are pretty sure they're going to give 5 stars. Because I think most of us, although we're excited about everything we're going to read, don't necessarily think everything is going to be a new favourite. I sort of expect more often than not to give a book four stars um, and then it sort of either does better or does worse than that um, whereas these are all books that like I would be surprised if they don't get five stars some in particular I look um 99.9999% sure these are gonna get five stars and I've only done one of these videos in the past a couple of years ago and then Maybe like a year after I filmed it, I filmed a reactions video where I let you know whether I did or didn't give those books five stars. It was a lot of fun because of all the ones I read, and I read more than half of them, I definitely didn't give anything less than four stars, which is really reassuring because it had all been like four or five stars. And that, like I said, is reassuring because it tells me that I do have a pretty good um, sense at this point of what I'm going to rate a book and uh, whether I'm going to love a book and what I'm picking up. So I want to do it again because it's been such a long time and it's such a fun video I think to watch. Like I love watching other people's versions of this and then maybe if you're interested let me know I could film a reaction to this one maybe at the end of this year and see how these books fared. But yeah without further ado I guess I will just crack on and show you the books I think I'm going to give five stars um, that are all on my physical TBR because I'm really trying to work through some of my physical TBR this year. Uh, first up is a book that I think I'm going to give five stars because of the author and it's The Dark Mirror by Juliet Marillier and this is book one of The Bridey Chronicles. So I have given virtually every book I've read by Juliet Marillier five stars. There's been two, three stars, <laughs> but she wrote a lot of books, and a couple, like one or two, four stars, but then more than all of that put together that have been five stars. I love Juliette Marillier and even when I've not necessarily given her books five stars it's mean it's typically been because they're not her adult books and I think her adult books are her strongest. This is the first book in an adult fantasy series by this author that I haven't read yet so I'm just super excited to start a new adventure with Juliette Marillier. This is one of her backlist titles and I picked it up secondhand online ages ago. Really want to buddy read it with my friends Jill and Lauren because we've buddy read quite a few Juliette Marilliers now so that's an experience I really uh, like value. We've read five of her books together now and out of those five I've given four five stars or three four stars and maybe Three, five stars and maybe two, four stars, but you, you get the idea. So I'm kind of hoping I can I convince them to pick up a copy too and read it, but if not, I am super excited to start a new series by her. And I don't really know terribly much about the storyline uh, because I just picked it up because it's Julian Rillier. Really I believe this is one of her books which has um, multiple perspectives, a female, a main female character and a main male character. Um, it starts off with Bridie, who's a young scholar that's sent to live with a druid, but then he meets uh, this foundling Tuala, who is um, a fae child and um, I guess they uh, meet as adults or grow up together and then end up on some sort of adventure and probably fall in love because there's usually a bit of a romance in her books, although it's usually very slow burn. And as you can tell, I'm kind of just excited because it's Juliet Marillia and it's chunky and it's medieval fantasy and I think it's just going to be very much like my favourites by her, which are Dreamer's Pool and Daughter of the Forest. So very looking forward to this. We then have something completely different, which is a non-fiction book. This is one I picked up quite recently and it's Abolition Democracy, Beyond Empire, Prisons and Torture by Angela Y. Davis. So this is a series of interviews with Angela Davis, which were given after the Abu Ghraib prison scandal. And it's specifically, I believe, dealing with non not just prisons but torture and um, the treatment of prisoners and, the, and torture by um, the US sort of justice system on prisoners and I have not given a book by Angela Davis less than five stars ever. She writes the most incredible non-fiction, she is such an accessible writer but so so insightful and I get so much from reading her books and this is sort of part of a little series that she did because there's one very similar to this in similar like size, length, um, called Our Prisons Obsolete so this should um, build on that because it's on a more specific aspect of prisons, it's on torture like I mentioned in the US prison system um, and also after a specific incident and Angela Davis's comments on that so I think it's going to go very well with her other books that I've read and build on what I've learned from her so far and also just be another incredibly insightful 
read basically because all of her books have been. We then have a children's book because apparently this is the most random stack of books you could think of and that is book six in the Incorrigible Children of Ashton Place series. So this one's a sequel. There's not too many sequels on here I think there's only two. So there's only two sequels here and I think sequels do feel a little bit like cheating because if you've adored the series you expect that you'll probably react similarly to the other books in it and this is the final book in the series uh, which is one of my favourite middle grade series of all time and one that I've read entirely as an adult so I think it has so much to offer adults and it's The Long Lost Home by Mary Rose Wood. These books are all about, and I've mentioned them a lot recently, um, but they're about a young governess who is living in the 1800s and she goes to take care of her first sort of uh, uh, set of charges. She becomes responsible for these three children that were raised by wolves originally and are li now living with a lord and lady in a manner and need like etiquette lessons and Latin lessons and all that stuff that young aristocrats and they hundreds were expected to know but also to train them to stop barking randomly at pigeons um, and they're so fun and so witty and full of tons of rip-roaring adventures so I'm gonna be really sad when this series is over I have to say but I'm also super excited to see how it all wraps up because I have like a really good feeling and I've given almost every single book in this series five stars um, and if I haven't then it's been four stars so like I said it feels like a given this is going to be a five star book, I'd be very surprised if it wasn't. We then have another non-fiction title and this is Leftover Women, The Resurgence of Gender Inequality in China by Lita Hong Fincher. So I read another book by Lita Hong Fincher in 2020 which was uh, Betraying Big Brother and that was all about um, the most recent incarnation of the feminist movement in China and um, the rise of feminist activism but also like um, the oppression of feminist activism and she mentions this book a few times in there because she wrote this previously this came out before Betraying Big Brother and it's explicitly about well I mean the subtitle pretty much gives it away the resurgence of gender inequality in China and it's not something I know tons about that was the first book I'd read dedicated to China and uh, women in China and this will presumably be my second but I thought it was such an accessible book on a topic that like I said I didn't know much about and um, it was really fascinating that talked to tons of feminist women who live in China and who have been part of activism in China and gave you their first-hand experiences and I think it would be really good to have a little bit more background that uh, this would provide I'm hoping. It's also a book that I know a few people have read and really really loved and has been on my TBR for a really long time but I'm now all the more certain I'm going to love it because I've read the author now and kind of have an idea of her prose and uh, non-fiction writing style. So yes I really I'm also wanting to prioritise this this year. We then have my other sequel which is A Closed and Common Orbit by Becky Chambers. This is book two in the Wayfarer series. Again I read the first book in this series last year which was The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and I gave it five stars. It was one of my favourite books of the year. It's definitely one of my favourite science fiction books of all time and I think if I reread it it could potentially become a favourite book of all time because it was just spectacular. And I'm really glad that I have a good idea of what this is going into because in some respects I think some people get disappointed by the second book because it's not about the same characters, it's just set in the same world. It is about one, like, some minor characters from the first book but it's not about the same main characters and in a very different context. So I get that that could be disappointing but I feel very well prepared for that and I loved how everything worked out for the characters in the first book so I don't feel the need to follow them again and I'm kind of excited to just see more characters in this world because I know how well Becky Chambers writes characters. That was what I loved about the first book was her um, building of characters and relationships in this intricate world and I'm just so excited to see her do it again. This could be a completely different book by Becky Chambers set in a completely different world and I think I'd still have faith that it would be a five star so I'm really excited for this one. We then have a book by an author I've read quite a few books by and that is The Hollow Places by T. Kingfisher. So I think I've read five books by this author. Four fairy tale retellings or is it three fairy tale retellings? Three or four fairy tale re retellings and most recently a horror novel. Um, and this is another horror novel by her and I love her fairy tale retellings but I was so impressed by her horror novel which was the Twisted Ones that I read only like a month ago that I am so excited to read more horror by this author. 
I just think I'm gonna absolutely love it. It's like slightly magical, interacts with fantastical fairy tales, horror, but set in the contemporary world. And this is the same, except it's about a woman who I believe, yes, finds a mysterious bunker um, in the wall of her uncle's house, which then leads her through to other magical world um, full of fears and dangers and scary things. So not exciting, fun, happy things, very, very creepy things. And I know that T. Kingfisher does creepy well, both from reading her horror, but also her fairy tale retellings. So I have faith that this issue could be another one that knocks it out of the park. And now that I've read the Twisted Ones, I'm just more excited. So we then have another one, and a lot of these are by authors who I've read before, as you can tell. I have two that are not by authors I've read before, and they're the next two I'll talk about. But first I'm going to mention Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. So I've read another book by Diane Setterfield, which is a 13th tale, and that was another five stars. To be honest, why would I put a book by an author on a five star prediction list if I hadn't given at least one of their other books five stars, if I'd read them before? Like, if I'd read an author and given their books three stars, I'm not going to assume... I would give their other books five stars. I'm just not. Um, but these are obviously all authors so far that I've loved in the past. And this sounds super good and I've had it on my shelf for like over a year, which is far too long. I need to get to it because I loved, 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 loved The Thirteenth Tale. Diane Setterfield is a stunning writer. She just weaves together words beautifully. Her prose are stunning. Um, and this sounds so mysterious and intriguing. It is about a man who turns up in um, a, a, an ancient inn on the River Thames one night uh, with a dead girl's body that he's found in the water. But then suddenly she wakes back up or comes back to life. And there may or may not be that little theme of magic realism in here. I'm not sure to what extent. Um, there is magic in here if she was never dead, but there's certainly a lot of mystery by the sounds of it. And I've heard really great things. The reviews have been fantastic. So I'm super excited and think I'll give it five stars. Like I mentioned, I do have two books by authors I've not read before though, so I want to mention those next. And the first one is a proof copy of Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. This isn't actually out until April, but I'd love to read it sort of um, just before or around the time it comes out so I could review it for you. Because I know in particular a lot of you like to know my opinions on Greek myth retellings, given that I am an ancient Greek scholar. Like, I know that a lot of you trust my opinions and have gotten recommendations from me in the past, so tend to ask for those. So I also like to deliver, which is by no means a pain to me because I love Greek myth retellings, and I particularly love Greek myth retellings that give voice to female characters from myth. And when I find Greek myth retellings that give voices to women from myth that I've not seen before, I get even more excited. And although there may or may not be other Ariadne retellings out there, I'm not really familiar with many. There certainly aren't as many as other women from Greek mythology. I have this whole database on my blog that I've put together that I constantly update, which has over a hundred books on it, all that retell myths. And I myself notice a lot of themes and repetition amongst the myths that come up, and Ariadne is not one of those. Um, maybe Theseus a little bit more, who is um, a part of Ariadne's story, but not so much Ariadne. And for that reason, I am so excited. I am so excited that uh, this author has decided to give Ariadne a voice and retell her whole life story, which is fascinating and full of so many different incidents and interactions with gods and mythical beasts and heroes and um, terrible things that happen to her, but also wonderful things. And I'm so excited to see how this author does it. Like. If this author does this justice, I know it's going to be a new favourite book and I have faith, so I'm just really super duper excited. We then have a book which is slightly older. In fact, when did you come out? So this came out in 2005 originally and it's The White Mare by Jules Watson. This is an ex-library copy that I bought second hand. Um, that's why it's got a barcode here on the front. But this is the first in the Dalriada trilogy. And this is a fantasy romance series set in historical Scotland. And the reason this is on my five star prediction list is because of the number of times I've seen this author compared to Juliet Merlier. Now Juliet Merlier particularly focuses on beautifully written, intricately detailed, slow build fantasy romances set in medieval historical periods. And this is a lot of those things. Uh, rather than Ireland, which is Juliet Marillier's preferred setting, this is Scotland, which is an extra bonus for me because I love a bit of like magic in Scotland. I, f I find um, traditional folklore from Scotland very magical, probably just because I grew up on it. And the writer's prose have been compared to Juliet Marillier and I love that kind of prose style 
for my fantasy and my fantasy romances. So if this is anything like Juliet Marillier, it's going to be a five stars. It could even be another new favourite author that I'm looking for people similar to Jules Watson in the future and that would be wonderful. So I really, really hope this lives up to my expectations. We then lastly have another non-fiction book which is Antigone Rising by Helen Morales, The Subversive Power of Ancient Myths. So this book is all about the significance and the potential of ancient Greek myths in our modern world from a feminist perspective and that is something I adore. That is something I discuss often in my academic life and with other scholars, old and new, um, with my like peers throughout my studies. We are very fascinated by these themes and I think that this book could very much just like encompass a lot of that and both prove like a really articulate sort of summary of all of those thoughts um, as well as a fantastic book for me to recommend to people in the future and refer to which is something I really appreciate in my discipline. Um, so I've got really high hopes for this. I've also read Helen Morales scholarship in the past, not on this specific topic. I've read her scholarship more generally on um, classical mythology but also on the ancient Greek novel and on women in antiquity, um, more from an ancient history perspective. So I have faith in her as a scholar because I really really admire what else she's written. So the fact that she's written something that's perhaps considered slightly more accessible, popular history um, that deals with um, modern issues, so it's also a very contemporary non-fiction book, gets me really excited and I have complete faith this will also be a five stars. So those are the ten books that I look at on my shelves and think yes, you are getting five stars from me when I read you, no doubt about it, and I hope I'm right. I would love to hear if you've read any of these. Did you give them five stars or did you not? Do you think I will? I guess that's what's important. And I'd also love to know about the books on your shelves that you are sure you're going to give five stars. Do you, as well, put off the books you're going to give five stars or think you're going to give five stars or do you read them immediately? Because I know there are two very different types of people. And I'm not entirely sure which I am, to be honest. Maybe it varies on the mood I'm in, um, but I've certainly not gotten around to these ones yet, so I better deal with that. And until next time, happy reading. I'll see you all again soon. Bye, everyone.